This was a two-part assignment and only one is done. Eric Tolsky is the GM. It's a solid start. It's a solid start. He's a guy that has been proven to be in the decision-making room on some very good decisions. Look at the recent drafts by the Carolina Hurricanes. They're very good drafts. Look at some of the decisions that were influenced by analytics that they've made recently. Been very good decisions. Eric Tolsky as GM is solid, but you've been hearing me say this throughout the process. They still need a hockey guy. And I'm not saying Eric Tolsky isn't a hockey guy. I'm using hockey guy as like a, a, an archetype, right? Maybe one step short of hockey hardo, right? One step short of that. You can flip the seats. You can shuffle the titles. I still think it is important to, at or near the top of your decision-making process in, in the front office, have both the, the numbers and the gut feel. Right? That's an answer that nobody wants to hear. Right In baseball, you hear this argument all the time. Is it the nerds with the numbers, or is it the old-school scouts that can like hear the crack of a bat and know that it's a good player? Like You need both. It's not either or. Right, If Eric Tolsky was the assistant GM as the numbers guy, the person with the advanced degrees from smart schools, the person that, that's, that's very analytically inclined, and Don Waddell was in the GM job as the guy that has all the connections, right? the guy that has somebody that's going to call him up and say, you're not going to believe what this prospect in Russia is doing. And then you take Don Waddell away, promote Eric Tolsky to Don Waddell's seat. I think you need to replace Eric Tolsky with, meaning the assistant GM, with a hockey guy or a consultant with the hockey guy, right? I don't know. Like, you can give him whatever title you want. There just needs to be at this metaphorical Knights of the Round Table that's making all the decisions for the Canes. I think you need both. So incomplete, right? Let me see what you do with it, right? It's, 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 you essentially, uh, essentially like, tr it's like a two for one trade almost, right? It's all right. You traded, uh, I'll use basketball as an example. You traded a shooting guard and a point guard for a shooting guard. I might love the shooting guard before I say, I love the trade. I need to know who you're putting in the point guard spot. You took Eric Tolsky out of the assistant GM spot to put him in the GM spot. Before I give you a full grade, I need to know who's the assistant GM. Or president of hockey, oper vice president of hockey operations, or uh, uh, consultant of hockey. Like, give me whatever that title is. Could be Justin Williams, by the way, who's a name that's been thrown around. He's been involved with the franchise, and obviously is a a guy who has you know his resume hanging in the rafters at PNC. Maybe it's Justin Williams, but I think you need that other thing, and and then Tolski can run the show. Right, Tolsky can be the GM that asks the questions in the room that the Knights of the Round Table discuss. Or actually, and I'll even throw this out there as an example. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe Eric Tolsky does have hockey guy in his bag of tricks. We just haven't seen it. I he hasn't been asked to do it because Don Waddell was doing it. Maybe he can. Maybe that was what the last twenty three and a half days was. Maybe that was his audition period to prove he had that in his bag of tricks. That would go against what they seem to want, which is everybody playing their role at kind of a very equal uh, decision making room. But maybe Tolsky's like, no, I got the hockey, I got the analytics, I'm good. I would actually kind of like that because that would seem to mean a GM is rising above the rest of the the influencers at the table. But if the Canes are seriously going to do this kind of unique hierarchy, which we've heard discussed, which is, you know, the GM doesn't have final say. The GM doesn't have uh, power of attorney for the franchise. You have this group that handles it like a democracy. All right, let me see who else is in the group before I give my final grade. You're off to a solid start, right? The first part that you've turned in, I like. Right, Tolsky brings something that is of value to a hockey team. And now you're promoting him to a, a higher title. Probably comes with a nice little cash boost. Good for him. Tolsky's living large. Like, like all of that is fantastic. But let me see what you do with the rest before I grade the entire decision. If this were another team, if this were pretty much any other team in the NHL, you hire the GM, I'm going to give you a grade. 
because most of the other teams haven't come out as publicly uh, and and been known as teams that like to use a more democratic process on big decisions, right? Usually there's a GM that makes decisions, then there's people that have his ear, right? There's people that, that can influence him, people that he trusts, but it always comes back to him. With the Canes, it does appear to be like the GM can be outvoted. That's what it appears to be. So all right, let me see who let me see who else has the votes. Who has the board seats? Sometimes you see that in uh like the high leverage Shark Tank negotiations. Now I'll give you your six hundred grand for twelve and a half percent, but I want two seats on the on the board. It's like all right, yeah, okay. I never really understand all of that. Let me see who else is on, uh, has a seat at the 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 round table. Then we can discuss final grades. But for right now, incomplete. Which you may say is a cop-out. That's fine. I don't think it is. You can say that, but I won't. 